Good morning, folks. We've got a blank star up there, but we've got Earth events, climate news, another comet, and two space mysteries. Let's begin with a quick peek at the sun and solar wind at spaceweathernews.com. Southern coronal hole trailing portions swinging through. Next northern opening not yet visible. No sunspots or eruptions heading at Earth. Phi angle shift in the solar wind yesterday as we peek back in there. Up top in blue is that flip of the phi angle, but the stream intensity has been dropping out and remains low this morning. Plasma speed under 400 kilometers per second and geomagnetic conditions are very calm and quiet. Moving on to Popocatépetl in Mexico, big fiery release around 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning yesterday, and it continued throughout the day as smaller ash and smoke releases. In the USA, the story is all about the snow. We showed the system set to deliver and deliver it did. Record marks for Thanksgiving Day across the west and into the normally hot southern portions of the states near the Mexican border. It is not done just yet. There is a low over the Rockies and it is continuing to hit the region. By the time it shifts into the east for strong weather potential, another one will be approaching the west coast. Folks, yesterday we showed a sun diving comet and today we'll take a look at one diving into our whole solar system, Borislav, the new interstellar intruder. Interesting article if you are needing an update on the object, but most critically, they know that the core nucleus of the comet is only about 2 kilometers across, but here is where space gets tricky. Here's how big its bright nucleus and comma are compared to the Earth. This is pretty standard actually. We have the tiny comets with their interior core nuclei really lighting up in the interior and having coma thousands to tens of thousands of times their size. Up next is an interesting forest study that suggests the tug-of-war balance between carbon uptake and heat stress can actually be won by the forests. They say that as it is, many forests will be able to not take the tremendous effect of climate change said to be coming due to their ability to better take up the carbon. They demonstrate that this number could actually be much higher in that category, especially if, now get this, the plants are able to somehow adapt to a changing environment. Up next, a paper has been released detailing a number of heat wave events from 2010 to 2015. They do not use solar particle forcing. They discuss the extreme events as being caused by carbon emissions. But in addition to selectively choosing their data inputs, their choices of heat events are hilarious. Couple back in 2015, when we had such solar activity, we almost lost the global grids. Couple in 2012, which was the peak of sunspot activity of the recent max, and the summer of 2010, which is when the sunspots finally came back, breaking the record low minimum solar activity at the time, and started producing solar flares. Literally, if you were to task me with going back through the last decade, picking out the heat events I figured were most likely to be caused by the solar activity of the time, for the purpose of cutting against the human causation story, I'd pick these. Seriously. Up next, we've got two Nova-like events in the heavens, and they are so similar they are suggesting it's virtually impossible. Especially since one is located inside an active galaxy, and the other on the outskirts of a red galaxy. Again, Nova is their best guess for the light curve. There is just no way they should be twins like this and taking such mysteries to another level. They say a 70 stellar mass plasma nucleus, aka black hole, has been discovered at LB1 and they have no idea why. They say there are no models that allow for its existence without evoking preposterously exotic scenarios. Of course, if it's the plasma nucleus science of that cosmology, as opposed to the black hole mathematical conjecture, then there is no mystery and it is allowed to exist. It's just not going to look like this. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Cat has added the code SBS to make the discount easier at otf.cells.com. Her children's learning books about space do make great gifts. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.